I'm here today talking with Bruno. Bruno, how do you pronounce your last name? Smith. It's Lithuanian. Okay. okay. <laughs> um, in America, it's, it's um, pronounced Kuczynskis. You are known as Phineas Gage on the Bitcoin forums. That is correct. And now, did I know the story of Phineas Gage. He was a railroad worker, and he got a train spike through his frontal lobe correct. of his brain, and it, it changed his personality. Is that that right? is correct. And that's that did not happen to me, though. <laughs> okay, so where did you get the name from? Um, the, the Phineas part was when uh, Julia Roberts had their, the paternal twins and named them Phineas and Hazel. So I took that spelling of Phineas, and during that, um, um, after they were born, there were Google, um, there, were, there were news outlets where the name came from and who's, what famous people were Phineas. One was the Phineas Gage with the radar spike, you, which you just mentioned, and, um, but spelled differently. And then there's a Phineas P.T. Barnum. So um, I used those monikers when I was playing poker back in the early 90s. Oh, I got you. And then it translated to the Bitcoin forum. That is correct. I, I love the moniker so much, I just moved forward with it. And so, now, now, then also I go by um, the most interesting Bitcoiner in the world. The most interesting Bitcoiner in the world. Now, I think you are living up to this because although this is an audio interview, we do have some pictures of this. You are here at the conference uh, wearing, well, let's see if I can describe it, a cowboy hat, a uh, stripy polo, a dog leash, and a pink tuto, and some, some polka dotted socks, long johns. Long underwear. A, long underwear. Swim trunks and ex- slippers. Swim trunks and slippers. So tell me about why you are dressed like this. It all started with the, the the pit, um, the pink tutu started when someone posted uh, about the tutu project, which consists of a husband and wife team that raises money for breast cancer. And the, the wife, you know, unfortunately, she had breast cancer. She's still with us. And um, about a dozen years ago, him being a photographer wanted to do something to support his wife. So he donned a pink tutu and probably just that, photographed himself, and the people enjoyed his images so much that later on it's turned into a book. So he, they had been raising money doing that, and and then the money they raised goes to the, the, the higher um, um, breast cancer foundation. Someone on the forum mentioned this, that they would be a good candidate for the Bitcoin 100, which is a charity um, fund that I have founded that if they embedded a donation option onto their website, then Bitcoin 100 would endow them with $1,000. If they did that, this particular poster said that he would um, donate a Bitcoin himself. And I figure I'd get a a few more Bitcoins. So basically, we'd be looking at $2,000 US that would go towards that cause, that venerable cause. And it's it, and um, I have not spoken with them um, personally, but another person in the Bitcoin 100, um, Dimitri, um, this, um, got an email reply that they would look into it. But he, he kind of felt like that chances are it's going nowhere. And I said, not so fast, because I'm going to Vegas and I will wear a pink tutu in the spirit of them. The rest of the get up had to do with another th- post that somebody mentioned. And, and, and I turned around and I, I just read, I wrote, wouldn't it be hilarious if I. And then I posted it, and I re- then I had read what I'd written, and hence the rest of the get-up. Wow, that's wonderful. So you're raising money for breast cancer, is that right? I'm not here raising money for the breast cancer. Um, when I leave here, I will contact their venerable cause, and then show, and there will be enough um, photos on the Internet to, to, to prove that I was here so that they would be more keen to it, um, embrace Bitcoin. Okay, so you're raising money to, to you're raising awareness to that's get... That's correct. That's right, okay. That's correct. Great. Wow. So uh, this is a really cool project. How has it worked out so far? Um, I got to have my picture taken with you, and uh, and again, we've raised enough awareness just by just by being here and, uh, the, uh, and, and, and interacting in the other photographs. That's just more leverage I will have when I contact the... Um, the Tutu Project. <laughs> Great. And how did you first find out about Bitcoin? Like, when did you first hear about it? Um, about June of 2011, two years ago. It was something else I was just researching. And um, for, for my, since I'm 53, my, my future um, um, retirement and what have you, and somehow Bitcoin came came about and I thought it was so fascinating that I just couldn't read enough for two days before I even uh, turned around and joined the, the main forum that is out there. 
Okay, and are you involved with Bitcoin 100 at all? I'm the one who founded it. You founded it? That's okay, right. I didn't know that. That's yeah. wonderful. And then, um, Ed and Dimitri, um, which goes by Rasha, R-A-S-S-A-H, on the Bitcoin talk, he's the one that um, handles the funds, and Roger Veer, um, ha has access to the wallet in case Rashad gets hit by the proverb proverbial bus. And then Ed handles the website, which I, I, I started, which both of us can handle that. And then since then, there's been two other people who have um, um, come into the Bitcoin 100. One is um, Jason King of Shounds Outpost in Pensacola, Florida. And the other person, Frankie Delani. That person has been so instrumental in, 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 in corresponding with Rashad, have, has suggested so many NPOs that have now embedded Bitcoin donation options on their site. So how did you get the idea for Bitcoin 100? I was on the Bitcoin talk, and because of my posting habits, since I'm not familiar with forums at the time, I went um, a little bit crazy on my posting, uh, again, on my posting habits. So I was banned for three days. Um, during that ban, I was so upset that I started another account, which was outside the rules, so they were kind enough to give me seven more days. So my ban was now 10 days, but I could have been banned for life at the, at the time. So sitting around, so Jones, and what can I do for the Bitcoin, Bitcoin community? I envisioned the Bitcoin 100s. And, um, it's, and, and then it's, it's, it um, grew from there. So it was, it was a, um, in, a, a good entity. Great, and so Bitcoin 100 gives um, a, an endowment of $1,000 in Bitcoin to, to charities who accept Bitcoin. That is correct. Originally it was um, 100 BTCs, but um, when the price point went over $10, it, um, it would have been way, way too much money for what we, we were asking. $1,000 is a nice magical number, and there's no reason to go lower than that. At the moment we have about um, $150,000 in our coffers. Great, and how has the response been? Have you had a lot of charities interested in um, learning how to accept Bitcoin? At the onset, no, it's very difficult. But most recently, it's a lot easier because of the mind share and the, the awareness to Bitcoin that's out there. So right. it, is, it is easier. And do you provide support to like setting them up with a wallet or setting them up with infrastructure to uh, use and accept Bitcoin? Um, the, the learning curve to have it set up is relatively easy. And yes, whatever support we can give, we do give. Um, the payment provider, we, we suggest BitPay. They're not, they're not obligated to use BitPay, but I believe uh, to date, all of them have used BitPay, which by doing such, BitPay will not charge their nominal fee of 0.95%, uh, 0.95%. Uh, uh, percent, which is less than 1% of the transaction fee. They, they do it for free. So if someone donates $1,000, and immediately that $1,000 could go right into their their um, banking <laughs> bank account the very next day within 24 hours, unless they set up their account a little bit differently. And how many charities has Bitcoin 100 funded so far? I believe, um, without looking, I, I want to say it's two dozen. And it, 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 it may even be more than that. So it, it, I want to say two to three dozen. So it is on the website, on one of the pages, um, on the Bitcoin100.org site. Great. And do you have any thoughts about why Bitcoin charities should accept Bitcoin? If they're if they're somebody's listening and they have a Bitcoin or they have a just a, a charity or a nonprofit organization and they're on the fence about using Bitcoin, why should they do it? What's your pitch? The the, the main pitch I, I would use is the um, the, the fee structure. The, it, it's one hundred percent free. Whereas now, depending on how uh, pay, pay, uh, PayPal has different pay structures for charities and uh, um, um, other entities, it could be anywhere from two point five to three point nine percent. Whereas with Bitcoin, we, we could do it one hundred percent free. There is no fees, not one iota. Great. And where can people find you online? With uh, Bitcoin one hundred org. Great, and uh, you are Phineas Gage on the Bitcoin Forum. That is correct. Okay. Bruno, thank you so much for talking with me today. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Purse.io is a gift exchange that lets you get Bitcoins at only a 6% premium and with a credit card. How does it work? You purchase items for other Purse.io members from their Amazon wish lists. 
In return, you get Bitcoins in the amount of the Amazon purchase. The more people participate, the more Bitcoins will be available. So tell your friends. Get exclusive access today at purse.io. 